Okay, let's get this out of the way. To Endo Electronics with Achi and Hitomi. And Stanley. Achi told Stanley and Hitomi what his father had done. Are you sure you really supposed to tell that to Stanley? Because it's actually pretty fucking crazy what your father is trying to do, so... Mm. As she listened, Hitomi hung her head. Her face was so... Sallow. I don't know that word, sorry. I'm so sorry, Achi told her. I'm not really sure what to say. He clenched his fists so hard his knuckles popped, struggling to keep his emotions in check. So if I were rendered brain dead, you could help your sister, Hitomi murmured. A state where brain function has ceased irreversibly. In Japan, there are two conditions for declaring breath death. Breath death? The first is that the patient must be comatose and in a state of apnea, no longer breathing, due to damage to the brain. The second is that the root cause is diagnosed and it is deemed that no reasonable treatment will restore brain function. Stop, she said quickly. Please, don't say things like that. A sad look came to Hitomi's face and she pressed her right hand to her heart. I mean, to find out like this... She turned to Achi, tears glistening in her eyes. I want to help your sister, but not at the cost of your own life. Come on, this is... it's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? We have... oh, it's... <clears throat> it's Stanley. We have other things to worry about right now. This time it was Stanley who cut her off. Remember, Alfred is after you, Hitomi. Isn't that what Kanan told you? Oh, okay, so they also told him about Kanan, I guess, so... He knows that they're t working together with her and they know that he's kind of working with her or... I don't know. Oh god. It's been a week since I last played. <laughs> I forgot most of this stuff, sadly. I took some time off from recording in general, so yeah, whatever. Yes, she said I was the mastermind's target. He to me wiped her tears away with her fingertips. So Alfred and Achi's father are after the same thing, Stanley said. Is it just a coincidence? It didn't sound like he thought so. Hold up, Achi growled, leaning in from the back seat. I don't think Achi's father is Alpha. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, my dad's way out of line. But he did what he did for Suzune. He wouldn't work with terrorists. I'm not saying he's deliberately aiding terrorists, Stanley replied coolly. It's common sense that a pro wouldn't get an amateur involved with their plans. That makes it too likely that a clumsy misstep will cause things to fall apart. But then again, that's not the way Alfred thinks. So, actually, the likelihood of a failure could be could well be part of the plan. A chief thought back to what Kanan had said earlier. She is really fucking cute, I gotta say. If you achieve your goals using accidental means, the outline becomes blurred and it makes it harder for anyone outside looking in to grasp what the actual plan is. That's such a joker way of thinking that I can't believe that it works in real life. <laughs> not only have they put together a perfect plan, they've purposely left certain tiny holes in it, which makes it not perfect, I think I said this before. So if we assume the plan has failed, the slip up- oh. <clears throat> Stanley again, sorry. So if we assume the plan has failed, this slip-up might be exactly what Alfred wants, Stanley muttered. Sort of an intentional hole, then, Achi said. Stanley snorted. Kanan told you guys that too, huh? If that's the case, then you really are a fool. <laughs> what? What did you just call me? Achi barked. If you've known all along how formidable this opponent is, you should have given him to me over to the police custody right away. Come on, they've known for half an hour or something. It's not like he knew all day. At the beginning he didn't even know that she was... who she was running away from, really. It's only a matter of dumb luck that either of you are still alive right now. It's not, it's not dumb luck, it's me guiding their way. Look, luck or not, me and Hitomi have managed to get by safely. That's all that matters. I agree in a sense. What exactly is the relationship between you two anyway? Are you guys dating? Achi and Hitomi exchanged glances. When Hitomi hesitated uneasily, Achi decided he'd better speak up. No, it's not like that. 
Uh, we just happened to run into each other earlier today. Guess I'm not the kind of guy who can abandon someone in trouble. Can't abandon someone in trouble, huh? You sure you're not just trying to make yourself feel self-important? There are plenty of people out there that you can't see who are also in trouble, who are also suffering. If you only help the ones close at hand, then what's the point really? The point is that you're at least helping someone, okay? This mindset is really unhealthy, <laughs> because you end up not helping anyone if you think that way. The world's a lot bigger than you can imagine, and there's a lot you're a bit blind to. Yeah, no shit. So what? If I see someone who's in trouble, I'm supposed to just ignore them? No, I can't do that. If I see someone who's collapsed from hunger, I'm not gonna just walk on by because there are people starving somewhere else in the world. I love you, Achi. How could I ever doubt you or your story? These moments are the moments um, that make me push through with Achi's story because it's dragging on way too long and I don't really like it for me, to be honest. But Achi is just... a light in the darkness. I'd be all, hey, let me treat you to a beef bowl or whatever. You couldn't have come up with a smarter example? Stanley replied with a tiny laugh. I thought it was a pretty good example because it actually kinda hits what you meant, what you tried to say. And he's even addressing exactly that point. If there's someone else that's even worse off. Even then you can help someone that's even slightly bad off. You know, someone who's starving right next to you? It's easier to help him, obviously, than kids in Africa, for example. Of course you should tr strive to help everyone, but you just can't. But if every person helps another one, man, we'd all be fine, I think. Anyway, okay, so I'm an idiot, and she scowled. My bad. Stanley laughed again. Today's been an interesting day, he said. I was with another fellow earlier who was just like you. Meaning what? Was he an idiot too? <laughs> I'd say so. Kano is pretty fucking dumb sometimes. Yeah, he was an idiot. Do all you Japanese have that problem? Hardly. My little sister's so smart, she'd make your eyes pop out. Well, I'm sure relieved to hear that. If everyone in this country were as dumb as you guys, I might actually start to like this place. Ah, that's cute. Huh? What does that even mean? Talk so I can understand, man. Achi shot back. But Stanley didn't respond, instead he stuck his head out the car window, peering at the road ahead. They were close to Shibuya station now, and the traffic had ground to a halt. Gridlock again, Stanley grumbled. It's probably better to walk the rest of the way to Endo Electronics. He pulled over to the side of the road. Specifically, his shoulder that runs along either side of the traveled portion of the roadway. A place where trash tossed out the windows of moving cars tend to accumulate. Tossing cigarette butts and empty cans out into the streets can potentially hurt people and it definitely makes a mess. Please don't litter. Okay Shibuya Scramble, now that you told me I won't ever do it again. I just needed someone like you to tell me. And she got out of the car, feeling his guts not up with worry. Pretty soon he was going to have to confront his father. Stanley gave a cheer look. Are you scared about meeting with your father? I'm not scared. First things first. I'm gonna punch him right in the face. Then we can have ourselves a chat. Don't let your emotions get out of control. Your father might be one of the key players in this case. I don't give a damn about that. Achi took Hitomi by the hand and started walking. They'd gone up and down Dokenzaka so many times today already, but this was probably the last time he and Hitomi would make their way up the hill together. His anger rising, Achi picked up speed as he marched onward, wanting to confront his father as soon as possible. Achi walked at an easy pace, wanting to delay the end of their time together just a little longer. Let's, let's walk at an easy pace, because I get the feeling that rushing stuff? Never good, right? I honestly can't remember if there were any... Oh yeah, no, wait. Were there any dead ends involving Achi? In the other stories? Oh, I don't know. Once they reached his home, this kidnapping case would be all over. Because his own father, Daisuke, would be arrested as the culprit. Kidnapping for ransom carries a potential life sentence, with a defi definite term of imprisonment of no less than three years. Great, it should be more in my opinion, but that's okay. Bringing Daisuke down would be easy. Achi wasn't worried about that part at all. 
Look at him, he's kind of handsome in this shot. If he didn't hold back, there was a good chance he'd wind up hurting his father. <laughs> and he's got Stanley with him, a literal CIA agent, who should be able to overpower just about everyone except for Kanan. Holding back. Getting hurt. Is he having flashbacks now too? A memory from long ago rose in Achi's mind. A pure white karate... Gi? I guess it's pronounced? Thrusting out with his left fist. Daisuke collapsing to the floor. One of many memories of his father that Achi could not forget. Whoa, did he knock out his father when he was a little kid? What a fucking pussy. <laughs> Damn. Kneeling before the memorial and altar of his mother, Kotone, Achi wept uncontrollably. He clutched his ohajiki tightly in his hands. A toy made of small coin-shaped glass beads, somewhat similar to marbles. The typical game involves flicking one's pieces into the opponents with a fingertip. Specific rules vary greatly by region. They look like candies. Achi had always been rather clingy with his mother. When she was alive, she'd ha she had often joined him for ohajiki, origami and the like. On this particular day, Achi had come home miserable after getting bullied by the neighborhood kids for acting like a wimp. Ah, Achi. He turned to see his father holding two cups of shaved ice. What a nice guy. Come here for a bit. They sat on the stairs together eating their sweet frozen confections. Damn, it must be pretty hard to be a single parent um, when your partner dies, especially. You want to get tougher? Daisuke's words were soft and simple. How about you and me get tougher together? Achi looked up at his father, frowning in confusion. How are we gonna do that? That's Achi's little baby boy voice. Well, for starters, how about we learn some karate? Karate? Achi's face twisted up unhappily at the idea. He couldn't even imagine himself punching or kicking anyone. It'll be alright, his dad said. I'll go with you, don't you worry. Daisuke flexed one of his scrawny arms. Weird flex, but okay. His biceps bulged up the tiniest bit. <laughs> Achi was well aware that his father wasn't much of an athlete. There had been an athletics meet at his grade school. Even now, the memory of Daisuke tripping clumsily during the parent participation relay was burned into Achi's mind. A type of children's event where the parents who have come to watch the children compete are who've come to watch the children's compete are asked to join in with them. Daisuke took part in a tug of war, only to get tangled up in a rope and dragged over the line. <laughs> and she was understandably disheartened by his father's embarrassing display, but after eating the lunch his father had made for him, his spirits quickly returned. Daisuke had made rice balls that were clumsily oversalted, but that she could tell how hard he'd worked to prepare them. Honestly? His father in the past was a pretty nice guy, how did he get so deranged? Also, I like the concept of parent participation in these sports days. That's nice, I wish we had these in Germany. Not that my parents would have ever <laughs> been good at these, but yeah, I, I, I just think it's a funny little idea. I guess, I mean, is, who's saying this now? I guess, I mean, if you're gonna be there... And so the two began training together at the local karate dojo. Great. Is this how Achi became so buff? Achi put on his white gi and fastened his obi tightly. As he did so, he felt as if his feelings were being anchored in place as well. Ichi, ni, san. Meaning one, two, three, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty well versed in Japanese if you didn't know. Achi's gi's leaves made a whooshing sound as he thrust out his fists in time with the sensei's chant. Even simple kata practice made him feel like he was getting stronger somehow. It's discipline. It's 99% discipline and it makes you feel good, because it's a good concept. His dad, having left Suzune in the care of their neighbors, was working up a sweat alongside him. But he was out of shape and his technique was shaky. He was soon exhausted and went to lean up against a dojo wall. Achi stepped out of the training circle and called out to his father. Dad, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just gonna take a little break. Daisuke sounded like he was on the edge of hyperventilating. <laughs> Damn it, man, you're out of shape. Thanks, Dad. Huh? What for? 
for asking me to come take karate lessons with you. And she was sure he'd never have dared to go to the dojo alone. Hey, just so long as you're liking it. Now go on, get back to training. With a deep bow, Achi resumed his kata practice. As they were walking home from the dojo, Achi turned to his father. How come you want to get stronger, Dad? He asked. I mean, you're not getting bullied by your friends. Well, would you still call them your friends after they bully you? I'm not sure. <laughs> Desuku was quiet for a few moments before answering. His words came out awkward and embarrassed. I was picked on a lot when I was your age too, Achi. I had a friend who would always come and bail me out. A friend? Yeah, a friend. A distant look came to his father's eyes. He was a real fighter. I always looked up to him. I wanted to be strong like him. His expression turned lonely. I don't get to see him anymore though. Why not? Achi asked. Did he die? No. No, no, nothing like that. And did you guys have a fight? Something like that. Daisuke smiled sadly. I guess he kinda... Blamed him, huh? Or... He blamed himself, more likely. <laughs> he stared out into the sky for a while before speaking up again. Who is it? Tateno, right? Yeah. His name's Tateno. Mm hmm? My friend. That's his name. I guess Tateno blamed himself mostly and just grew distant. Even more so than before. Achi's father increased his pace. Come on, he said. We have to go and pick up Suzune. After that, despite Achi's questions, Daisuke would say no more about his old friend. The music is really cheesy right now. <laughs> Jesus. By the time he was almost done with grade school, Achi had grown up fit and strong, almost unrecognizable from his younger self. Perhaps he'd had a physical knack in him all along. He was chosen as the representative for the boys' karate team, even managing to take second place in a national tournament. Whoa, that's impressive. Nobody bullied Achi anymore. <laughs> he could break their necks easily. <laughs> One time Daisuke suggested that the two of them do some sparring. Achi may have been a national competitor, sure, but he was still a great schooler squaring off against an adult. His father had been training for close to two years now as well, and his confidence had grown accordingly. Achi was excited to be able to face off against his old man. Early on in their karate training, Achi's kumite had seemed rather hopeless. He'd been shocked that his out of shape father was able to overpower him, but also pleased to get a sense of how strong the man was. Now, I, don't, I would have loved if they um, underlined the kumite word and explained it, because I don't know what this means. This time, Achi thought, he might well lose again, but he was going to go all out. As they adopted their fighting stances, Daisuka's face was full of confidence. The instructor gave the signal to, signal to begin, and Achi opened with a sharp low kick. Right in the balls! No kids anymore for you, Daisuke! Daisuke didn't guard against it, the blow caught him in the thigh. Okay. It looked to Achi like he'd allowed himself to take the hit, not fearing the effect of a shot's kick. Holy shit, it hurts so much! Ah! <laughs> Achi proceeded to unleash several more low kicks to the same spot. It's your own fault if you don't guard against it, you know? Bit by bit, Daisuke's face revealed his discomfort. Finally, he yanked his leg away. That was when Achi realized his father wasn't letting himself get hit on purpose. He was just unable to keep up with the speed of his son's footwork. If that was the case, Achi felt bad about exploiting his dad's weakness. He decided to leave his leg alone. Instead, he aimed a punch at his father's midsection. Slightly lower? And then you hit the balls. He was shocked by the impact as the blow struck home. He had an attack with a great deal of force. He'd just thrown a light midsection punch as a check. But as Achi pulled back his fist, Daisuke crumpled to the floor, writhing in pain as he clutched his gut. This was when Achi noticed the taste of blood. And he laughed at it. Achi stared in disbelief at his own hand. Unlimited power. <laughs> that was the last day that Daisuke went to the dojo. Oh man, you embarrassed him in front of everyone. You got beaten by a little kid. Achi, you jerk. Your dad's pathetic. Yeah, he's such a loser. Achi was on his way home from practice, and some older students from the dojo had started ripping on him. I wouldn't rip on the guy that managed to 
knock out his own father, you know? <laughs> I'd be pretty fucking afraid of this dude. <laughs> what? What did you just say? These kids were middle schoolers, but Achi wasn't about to back down. Not anymore. He thrust out with a quick punch, stopping it just short of one boy's nose. Go on, say that again. I'll kick your ass. The older boys went pale and took off and ran. Yeah, exactly. But this small victory did nothing to bolster Achi's spirits. His father had looked so small and lonely, heading away after quitting karate. But Achi didn't think there was anything pathetic about that. Sure, maybe by now he was better at karate than his father. But really, what difference did that make? It's not about who's stronger, it's about... I don't know, so many other things. In growing stronger, he'd learned something. Using force to win out over someone else didn't mean anything. Exactly. Oh my god, Achi. You can put it better than me in 99% of, of the cases. Why are you so perfect, Achi? If you only you didn't have this weird hair, haircut, you'd be really fucking cool. Strength alone didn't determine a person's worth. Then again, I guess it kind of suits him, so he still looks pretty cool. Achi loved and respected his father for going to the dojo with him. Beating him in a karate match didn't change the way he felt. God damn it, Achi. Stop making me like you. <laughs> Stop it. Achi resurfaced from his memories to hear Stanley talking on his phone. I see. So that's what's going on. Once we're finished with things in Dokanzaka, I'll bring you to me right back to the precinct. Curious, Achi turned to the American. Who were you just talking to? What was that just about just now? By bring him to me in. Do you mean you're gonna arrest her? Um, do we want to know who he was talking to or what it was about? Stanley's reply was clipped. I know what they're after now. What? With that, Stanley proceeded to wrap up his phone call. Guess I'm not going to get much out of this guy, Achi thought. By now, they could see Endo Electronics up ahead. Achi was about to hurry inside when Stanley stopped him. I'll go in first. You two wait out here. No, wait. This is my dad we're talking about. And you don't think it's dangerous to bring Hitomi right to him? Well, alright. We'll wait here for a bit. And once we know it's safe, we'll head on in. You cool with that? I'm cool with that. Stanley stepped inside. Is he gonna kill him? That would be really... Crazy. A chief fussed about impatiently, staring at the entryway. The palm of his clenched fist was sweating. Never before in his life had he wanted to just deck his old man. Itomi watched him uneasily. Itomi. Yes? I'm sorry. I really don't want you to have to see this, but I think you're about to witness the crowning shame in Endo family history. <laughs> A chief don't say that, Itomi said. She squeezed his hand. Oh, whoa, 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 that's a flag! That's a fucking flag right there. He found his other fist unclenching. Please, you have to try to talk to your father. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, suddenly there was a loud crash from inside the building. The time for waiting had passed. Let's go! And she and Hitomi raced inside. Barging into the living quarters without bothering to shed his shoes, he heard his father's voice coming from the workroom. Dad! Achi hurried through the workroom door and saw Stanley holding his father pinned across the desk. Let me go, please, let me go! The Izuka thrashed both his legs. No dice, dude. This guy's from the CIA. He's a big guy. Stanley, please, let my father go. I want to talk to him. Eh, I'm not sure. Stanley snorted dismissively, but he did, as he was asked. Daisuke stood up, rubbing at a sore wrist. Dad, please, you have to tell me. Where's Maria? Maria? What are you talking about? Daisuke wouldn't meet his eyes. Don't play dumb with me. Achi pointed at Hitomi. You know who this is, don't you? Hitomi Osawa, the girl you've been after. Maria is her sister. But Daisuke remained silent. You're gonna pretend you didn't call the hospital? Nothing about maybe being able to get your hands on a heart? I mean, seriously? It's all so simple. Even I can tell what's been going on. You've been watching me and Hitomi through the surveillance cameras. 
And you were telling that guy with the cane where we were. The blood began to drain from his father's face. You got it all figured out, huh? <laughs> Don't you go quiet on me. If I'm wrong, then go ahead. Tell me the truth. Daisuke's arm shot out suddenly, knocking an, an external hard drive from his desk onto the floor. It was over and done before Stanley could stop him. Stanley hunched down and picked up the shattered drive. I'm guessing there was important data on here. Footage from the cameras, maybe? I have no idea what you're talking about, Daisuke spat. You can't do this to an innocent person, Dad! And she shouted, grabbing his father by the collar. It was the sound of footsteps from out in the shop. Someone was quickly getting closer. Danger! 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 Stanley grabbed Hitomi by the hand and pulled her back against the wall. God, I love Stanley. I love that he's here with us. I think he's a good guy, hopefully. God, I hope he is. <laughs> and she stiffened as he turned his gaze to the door. Who's it gonna be? Ghostbusters? No? Oh, it's a keep out! It's a keep out! It's not gonna be Minorikawa, is it? Maybe it's Kanoa? 